Hello, Sunnyside. The good Lord just continues to let us know that he is really in charge. There are a couple of things I'd like to share with you this time. One was that we really had a successful COVID vaccination uh, session here at the community center. With the exception of maybe two people, all who phoned in to reserve their vaccinations were really able to get them at this community event this past Thursday. Do know that there was an abundance of food that was distributed at that very same time. So we praise God for um, these successful community events. Our youth program is continuing to grow and do know that they're meeting from 1 until 4 p.m. in the afternoon, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Note also that your church still is in need of your support. So again, your support would, your financial support as well, your, finan your financial support would be appreciated. We'd ask that you remember the family of Eliza Graham for she lost her husband this past week. Again, let's continue to lift the Graham family up in prayer and remember our own sick and shut in. Thank you. Well, the only thing I asked Sunnyside to do, if they would, especially my older people, I'm asking them to please, please, you, you, you've done your time. Let the young people come along and do what God has called them to do. I'm so remindful of how when I was doing it my way and I thought I was right and someone had to show me, no, boy, this is wrong. We need to follow and teach the young people what to do and how to do it. Don't get in their way be in competition with young people. You have to love them and lift them up and not try to outdo one another. I pray one day we'll come together as a unit and we'll learn to love one another just as God loves us. And it bothers me because remembering from the South how I would be in squirrel hunting and down in the woods and see a black man hanging from a tree and have to come home and tell my dad all about it. Lord, these people don't know what they're going through now. I've been through so many things in my lifetime but through it all, God has always kept us as a people. And all we need to do is keep looking to him, stay in our place, let the young people step up, and we ought to be glad to let the young people step up and do things and get out of their way and stop blocking them. We need our young people to come alive and do what's right in the eyes of God. That's what we need. So Sunnyside, I love you. But uh, we need to get it together and stop foolishness. That's another real. As 
we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all Good morning, I'm Deacon Glover, and once again, I have the honor to read the Word of God. And today's Word of God comes from the book of Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, and Matthew 11, 28 through 30. And it reads as follows. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry a heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. And may God bless the hearing and the reading of his word, and may the church say, Amen. Yeah. 
Precious Father, we come to you now and ask you, Lord, to visit us in this place. Let the words that I speak be your words. Lord, let something be said that moves and changes and makes people want to live for you. Because in the end, Lord, that's what it's all about. And we pray this because you are God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello today, uh, Sunnyside. I am coming to you. This is actually, this day is the day five years ago that I signed a contract to be your pastor. And in those five years, I've learned a lot. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how someone says they just become a pastor. There's a lot of learning. There's a lot of ups and there's a lot of downs. There's a lot of times you wonder if you made the right decision. But I thank God for this time because I see exactly what he was trying to do and what he is doing in not only my life, but in the life of this church. Even a lot of people say, uh, ask the question, when is the church going to reopen? And I've learned that that's sort of a crazy question because you see God's church never closed its doors. We have never shut down. I can't find in the scripture anywhere it says that God said go to church. But it did say go to those that are lonely, go to those that need you, go to those who need comfort, go to those who are in prison and visit. That's our work as a church. So no, we never shut down. We've been working, doing our work with the homeless. We've been doing our work with the young people so that they don't get in trouble. We've even dealt with, with people who have some mental problems. And I, I'm reminded of Dante who sat in the middle of the street 
It's a four-way stop sign. And the Spirit led me and said, go talk to him. I said, come on, Lord, come on now. <laughs> and as I walked and approached him, Dante just said to me, you may enter my space. And we talked and Dante got up and walked into the church and we had a time of prayer. This is a time where saints need to be saints. And that's why this morning I want to deal with some scriptures. I want to deal with scriptures that let you know that everybody's got trouble nowadays. Everybody's uh, got pain. Everybody is lost and, and looking for a way. Everybody's listening. They got voices in their head saying, what is this all about? And it's found in scripture, Ephesians, the sixth chapter, where it says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But we wrestle against powers, against kingdoms of the darkness, in spiritual places of the utmost of the underworld. So don't you think that your money problems are just there because uh, uh, you didn't do right and all of that. Don't you think that you're fighting against political powers? Black lives matter and all lives matter, but don't you depend on that either, that all of us have trouble and pain. And the, the scripture says that a man born of a woman is full of trouble. But this morning, I want to give you a little hope. You see, Jesus preached and some of his best sermons was in Caprinia and, and all around Jerusalem where he grew up. And, and in the 11th chapter of Matthew, he says something. He starts reading near the latter part and around the, the, the latter part, he says that I'm, I'm disappointed because I came to those that I did my best work. I came to those that I preached my best sermons. I came to those that I gave my heart to, and they rejected me. Oh, I can relate to that. But then Jesus did something unique. He encouraged himself while he was giving us advice. In Matthew, the 11th chapter, the 28th verse read, Come unto me, all ye who labor, and have heavy laden, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burdens are light. That Jesus was simply saying, look, it's not always going to be easy, but it's all right. That if you put your trust, your faith in me, take off the stress, take off the burdens, the easy low monthly payments, the checks of unemployment you didn't get. Look, stop worrying so much. And yet, yet I know your heart is filled with trouble and, and especially now with this COVID and everything else going on. Revelations talked about it. Revelation said that, that, that there will be four horses that are released and the first horse was Jesus Christ going before you saying that I will make everything all right. And then comes the second horse, which is the horse that takes away peace from the earth. And you see peace is nowhere to be found. And then the third horse, which takes away justice from the earth. And justice, not just in, in, in the courtrooms, but justice and fairness in the streets, where black men being ki killed and shot down like dogs. Justice in economics, where the rich are rich and the poor just get poor. And then that last horse, that pale horse, releases death. And this COVID thing has become a, what can I say, a, a, a death pit. In India, they're, they're dying so fast that they say, don't even bring them to the cemetery or the morgue. Just bury your loved one right in the backyard. But yet he says to all, come unto me all that labor 
and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that made me think about something. Is, it, 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 in that, 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 that scripture, it says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but it says put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the days of the wicked one. And one of those uh, verses, it says also that take the shield of faith because it will guard you against those fiery darts of the devil that comes to you and tells you you're not worth nothing, tells you that, that all is forsaken and nothing's worth anything, that tells you why don't you just commit suicide and get it all over with. Those fiery darts. And I thought about, I, I used to do some videos for the L.A. Fire Department. And they used to go to the schools and they'd tell the schools that when you're on fire, that you need to do three things. Stop, drop, and roll. Stop what you're doing, drop to the floor, and just roll. And that would put out the fire. And this morning, saints, I want to come to you and say, drop, Stop, drop, and roll. In this scripture, it says to us, stop what you're doing. Stop all your work and talking about you're going to do this and you're going to do that. You're going to become this and become that. Yes, it's good to have ambitions, but what if you never make that? Still, you can be successful if you stop and realize that, that your success is not built on what other people say. It's not built on all the money you have. Your success is built on Jesus Christ and his blood and righteousness. What do I mean by that? That you need to know that life is more than about this flesh and this blood that you need to learn how to relax in life. And I remember my time in Cancun and, and it was amazing to me. We were on vacation and, and Lord knows I have enough stress, but I, I got out in that water and they say that salty water will, will help you float. Well, I found out it was absolutely true. I got out in that water and I leaned back and I floated and I fell asleep. I was sleeping and when I woke up, I was startled because I, I was in the ocean. And thank God I had not drifted out too long. But that's the kind of rest we need where we're just floating through life. But I also found out on another vacation, there's another kind of rest. A rest that says, no matter what I do and no matter where I go, ain't no problem. You know that was in Jamaica. No problem, man. They taught me that that there's nothing to get all frustrated about. You know, we went to Jamaica and the, and the room wasn't exactly like I wanted and I started fussing and, and doing this and the lady just says, no problem. No problem, sir. And she did all the things that we asked her to do. And then I found out that there was another kind of no problem. That they didn't just do anything you asked, but they got real with you. We went to the restaurant and I, I didn't see what I wanted and, and, and I asked the lady, look, do you have uh, this in the kitchen? Do, I, she says, do you see it on the menu? And I said, well, I'm just asking, can you, do you see it on the menu? In other words, you're not going to give me a problem because you don't see what you want. And we have to learn that sometimes we don't always get what we want. But we can rest in the fact that if we know Jesus, if we have allowed him to come into our heart and change our hearts and make us a brand new person on the inside. And I'm not talking about some kind of emotional release or all that. This is just common sense. You go to the one that created you and say, Father, my Lord and my Savior, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of ignoring you. Forgive me of not realizing that you've been knocking on the door of my heart all this time and I have not let you in. Come into my life. Show me how to live a better life. Give me this rest that you talk about. But he says in order to do that, in that second 29th verse, he says, take my yoke upon me and learn of me. You got to know who he is. You got to start a relationship with him. He says, learn of me. Give me a chance to 
come into your life and for you to know me. And so many Christians, they walk down the, the, the aisles of the, the church and we join the church and we join this society and that society and we, we, we become good church members in the choir and the usher board and all that, but don't know Jesus. We don't know that when we pray, we're talking to the, the Son of God. We're talking to God himself. That, that, that this relationship has the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That when we pray to him, that they're listening. Imagine that now. Come on. If you walked into the President of the United States Chamber, and Mr. Biden sat there, Listening to you, how would you feel? Would you feel a little important? Would you feel like, oh, oh, this is going to be good? Well, imagine walking into the chamber of God, the one who spoke a world into existence. Imagine him who knows your thoughts before you even think them. And, 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 and this one who said to you, and you've got to believe this. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Even when you turn the other way and forget about me, I have never left you and I will never leave you because I love you. Well, how do, how do you learn about this relationship? Well, number one, when you pray and talk to him, you communicate, you tell the truth. You let him know. Praying is not some kind of systematic uh, 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 script where you got to follow. And some of these holy folks that pray like that, all, uh, all, all our most heavenly, gracious, heavenly Father, to thee we beseech thee and we come before thy presence. No, no. Jesus wants you just to be real. God, I got some problems in my life. God, I can't pay my bills. God, I need you to help me because someone in my life has passed passed away and my heart is empty. I, Lord, I need you to come right now. I need you to speak a word to me. I need to find a path because I'm lost. Be real with God and he'll be real with you and he will answer your prayer. Oh, I'm a witness he will. And then you have to learn of him. You have to take this book here. It's called the Bible. Yeah. And you, you read it and and, and sometimes if you're a new Christian, it's, it's hard, but you start in some easy chapters like John and the Psalms and, 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 and you read through them and, and listen to what God says about you, what God says about others, what God says about himself. And you'll find out it says that he is lowly at heart and meek. All that says that, that God is not standing over you ready to pounce you every time you sin, every time you do wrong, every time you curse, every time you make a mistake. But he's like a loving father who says, okay now, let's get it better. And the Bible says that no matter how many times you fall because your loving father is your loving father. He will pick you up. Clean you off. Just like your parents would do. You ever notice that big football players and prisoners, they always say when they get on camera, hi mom. Because no matter what they've done, they know that usually it's mama who will never leave them and never forsake them and will always be there to wipe them and say, I love you, son. Well, God is 10 times more loving and 10 times more gracious. And in 1 John, he says, no matter what you do, if you come to me and ask for forgiveness, I will forgive your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. You see, and that's where we got to live because it says that also, he says, and I will give you rest for your soul. And you see, the soul is, is where the flesh and the spirit war. In Romans, the seventh chapter, St. Paul wrote that I would do good 
but evil is always present. And that that I would do good, I always seem to do bad. And I can't seem to get this thing right. And there's a war taking place in my soul and in my body. And I need some help. And then he comes in Romans and says, oh, the eighth chapter, thanks be to God who gives me the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And there is therefore now no condemnation that he has set me free from all my sins and evilness, all my mistakes, all my unperfectness, that he accepts me just like I am. And we need to learn that, that God accepts us. He knows that we're not perfect. And I, and I like what, there, there was a newscaster by the name of Max Robinson. And Max Robinson died of AIDS. But before Max Robinson died, he said this. He says, in the end, you'll find out that it's all about your integrity. That matter, no matter what you do, no matter what you've done, no matter what you have, it's all about integrity. And I had to look up the word integrity, and it, it just means your self-worth. Were you true to yourself? Were you your authentic self? Were you real? God will make you real. He'll change you and make you a brand new person on the inside. And then he'll take something, your mind. And the scripture says in Romans, the 12th chapter, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you render your life a living sacrifice. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by letting him renew your mind. Oh, we need our mind renewed. We, we need what I call soul rest. That, 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 that when we drop to our knees, we need to know that God has us and, and that God will keep us. That yes, we stop what we're doing. We drop to our knees and let God take control and have control. And this is where he says, I send the Holy Spirit. That you don't have to fight that soul battle by yourself. That I'll send the Holy Spirit. And in John he says that I will send him and he will lead you, guide you, and comfort you in all things. I will not leave you by yourself. And that, then lastly it says, stop and rest drop and pray oh but you got to learn how to roll <laughs> what does that song say roll with it baby you got to learn how to walk and talk with God every day knowing that there's peace and there's love and there's no problem like the Jamaicans say there's no problem man you, you get a bill you can't pay no problem somebody hurts you and misuses you and lies on you oh no problems God's got this in his hand and, 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 and that rolling simply means you walk by faith and not by sight. You don't walk in the problems that you see. You don't walk in the trouble that you see. But you walk in the faith knowing that God loves me and has a plan for my life. God loves me and knows where I need to be. God loves me and will take me to a beautiful life and eternity. You see, we as Christians forget that this world is not our home. That we need to realize, like the Jamaicans realize, that, that you in my country and, 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 and my father controls this, not you. Therefore, you won't mess up my life. So when things happen in your life I, that's not right or bothers you, I want to give you a little uh, thing that I worked out that we walk by faith, but we step by trust. That means every step you take, you trust that God is with you, he's going to protect you, and he's going to take you where you need to go. Step by faith as you're rolling through life. And, and, and in order to, to really get this 
message across. I, this is important that, that every day you, you realize you can walk in the rest of God. Walk in the peace of God. And my brother, before he passed, bless his heart, I remember that in the projects, you know, uh, we, there, there was different groups of people. Now, he was the cool, they, he was cool. He could dance, he beat and, and won all the dance contests. I was with the group, we were jocks and, you know, we were too cool to dance and we stand around the wall and watch everybody else dance. And, but as you got older, you realize that if you wanted a girlfriend, you better learn how to dance. <laughs> and, and we asked him, he said, can you, can, we asked him, can you teach us how to dance? And he lined us up. He said, I, I, I want to teach you a little something. He said, it's called the two-step. He said, all you do is this. And we said, we could do that. And we learned that two-step. And then he said, now bend your knees. And then he said, now get some head in it. And we, before we knew it, we was out there dancing, doing those two steps. Well, I tell you as Christians, we need to learn the two steps. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Trust that he loves you. Trust that he has a plan for your life. Trust that everything will be all right. Trust that he loves you above everything else. You've got to learn to love him the way he loves you. And you two-step and no matter what comes before you, you know that everything is going to be all right. You know because God is on your side and there's no one like God. Hallelujah. And every day, we stop, we drop, and we roll with it. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 God loves you. In the name of Jesus, stop. Be still and know that he is God. Drop to your knees and pray and read your Bible and know him. And lastly, by faith, let the Spirit of God walk with you and talk with you and let you know that you are special in God's sight. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. And on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered his disciples and he told them, I must go away. But let not your heart be troubled. You believed in God, believe also in me. That in my Father's house are many mansions and if it were not so, I, I wouldn't have said it. I'm not lying to you. But I go to prepare a place for you. For you. Yeah, I'm talking about you. So that where I am, you will be also. And he said, in order to remember this, that I am going to give my body for you. And he took bread. And he said, this is my body, given for you. So because I die, because of your sins, you won't have to. And he says that after he had given thanks, he took the bread and blessed it. And he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat ye all of it, for this is my body given for you. And as often as you do this, remember me. Hmm. 
And in the same manner, he took the cup. And after he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples and take, and he said to them, take, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood shed for you. My blood that shall wash away all your sins. My blood that will open up a new relationship between me and you and God. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood shed for you. And the scripture says that after they had sung a song, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Well, we're not going to sing no song. But I guarantee you this, that God will put a song in your heart that the world cannot hear. And you can do a two-step. <laughs> you can do a two-step to God's music in your heart. So you go and walk with God and let him walk with you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Say I want to give my best 
like that's real. And I want to serve you, Lord, for real. Because you deserve all this and more. So I'll give you every little thing that I have. Oh, it belongs to you. And I give you more. I, more, yeah. Play the music, yeah. And Lord, I want to give you more. You deserve it all. Sir.